If you have a modern computer and you do any kind of network forensics on it, like with TCP view, you are going to find a ton of applications that connect to the internet and make connections actively. Some of these may even be applications that you don't know existed or have no reason really to connect to the internet. Great example in my case is the Shore app, which is a simple, you know, microphone settings app. And of course, there are applications like Discord and Steam that do need to connect to the internet and they're doing so. The funny thing is I did this experiment with a brand new laptop and it lit up like a Christmas tree. It's one of my most popular videos, so you should definitely check it out if you haven't. And this is a growing issue with a lot of new apps. So I'll show you, for example, uh, my microphone app. So this is a simple app that I use to control the volume levels on my microphone. This is a feature that has not changed in years, doesn't need to be updated. It's just basic functionality that is done through software. But if we go into even the preferences of this tiny app that came with my microphone, as you can see, it has its own analytics section, which is sending them information to improve their products and services based on my usage data. And if you read carefully, this data is not just sent to Shore, but it's also sent to their partner, Mixpanel. And a lot of apps by default are gonna have things like this to automatically send. Of course, you can manually go and say, don't send, but there's no guarantee that that's not gonna be changed in the future. Or even if you do select this, they don't automatically collect some data and share it. Now you might say, well, I don't really care about some data being shared with this company, but what about notifications? So in the several years that I've used this program, there've never been any massive updates that completely changed how my microphone works or made my experience better, but I've had several notifications about new products and features and things that were launched that are just software gimmicks or additional programs that further track you with ads or are designed to sell more stuff that started to pop up. And this is actually the legacy app that I'm using. The newer one is a lot worse. And this is just an example to tell you that every single app that you use is going in this direction. Now I have an Asus motherboard, and as you can see, it has its armory crate running in the background, which constantly updates with a bunch of stupid stuff like wallpapers, ads for additional software that I don't want, all in the guise of, well, we want to connect to the internet to make sure you're up to date. Sometimes allowing applications to connect to the internet even makes your computer worse and unreliable because you might be using your microphone and then suddenly there's some software update that's poorly designed so it defaults to muting your microphone and you don't notice it to turn it off and you lose a day's worth of work. That's happened to me before. And after the CrowdStrike incident, I don't think we need to talk about the quality of software updates. So if you have an application that simply does not need to connect to the internet, you should not allow it to. And on Windows, there's a very simple and easy way to do that with Windows Firewall. A lot of people don't use it because it's kind of buried in there. But if we do a simple search for Windows Firewall, we can open it up and you can see that we have a simple UI where we can set up inbound and outbound rules. And I wanna quickly demonstrate how this works. So if we go into outbound, you can see we have a lot of rules set up. These are applications creating rules to allow themselves to connect to the internet. Great example is Aura Creator, an app for different lighting and background settings that I don't really need, but it likes to run in the background and download stuff. And a lot of these tools ultimately are just ways for companies to advertise to you, but you can create your own rules. So if you go ahead and select new rule, select program, you can go ahead and find any program that you want. So say, for example, our microphone app. So if we just do a simple search for it, sure, um, open file location, and then go into properties, you can see where it is. And then all you have to do is just copy the location of the application, paste it here and then hit next, and then you can create a rule for it. And all you have to say is block the connection and it's not going to be able to connect to the internet. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this very quickly with an app that you know and love. So with Steam, for example, we have a rule that does just that, it blocks Steam. And the moment I enable this, Steam is going to be blocked from connecting. I'm gonna demonstrate that. So say, um, open our friends. So as you can see, um, we are currently online. And if I enable this rule, give it a couple seconds, boom, we are disconnected. And Steam has actually kind of disappeared from here. This is obviously just a local connection. That's what this means. It's the loopback address. But you can see in the remote addresses, Steam no longer shows up 
because we just stopped it. So it can no longer connect to the internet. And it's pretty dynamic. So we can just go ahead and disable the rule. And now, boom, again, Steam is back online. It's connecting to the internet and we are online and we can play our games online. Now, obviously the use case is not for you to block Steam because I suspect you need it to connect online. You wanna receive your messages from your friends. You want your games to be up to date. But if you have a microphone app like I do, and you don't really care for um, analytics to be sent to the company or get notifications about new products, you can simply shut it down by using the firewall features and block all of their connections. And this is of course just an example. You might have so many other applications. Maybe you play music, so you have an app to connect your keyboard to your computer. Maybe you're in a company that uses a bunch of proprietary software and tools. Maybe you have drivers for your motherboard or for your cooler or for the RGB in your fans. And you totally need your RGB to be checking for updates and sending data every day about what color you use, pardon my sarcasm, but you can turn all of that off using the same method that I just showed. Now, some of you who are pro users, obviously this is nothing new to you. Maybe you use something more sophisticated like a Raspberry Pi or a network firewall to block all these different connections and spying. But I do wanna talk about it in an approachable way because there are tools like Windows Firewall that pretty much everyone can use and almost nobody does. And I think it's gonna be more and more useful, not just to stop applications from spying on you, because at the end of the day, that's a losing battle, but also to maintain the usefulness of certain applications, because now we have patterns where applications will release new updates that take away functionality, or that basically turn an application you already paid for into a subscription service. And most importantly, reliability. You don't want something that's working on your system to break because somebody updated it, especially if it's the type of application that does not need to be updated. If you're using a software for sketching, I know this advice may sound counterintuitive, especially as security professional, what you don't want me to be up to date. Sure, you wanna patch your vulnerabilities, update your operating system, but I think in modern times, that justification is just a cover up used by everybody to push any kind of update they like. I mentioned my microphone app. There's not been a single update that actually <laughs> fixes a security issue or does anything for the user. Everything that they pushed out but let's say it did. You can always just disable the rule when you check and realize there's this amazing quality of life update and let it update. But after all, it's your computer and it's your internet and uh, the more control you can have on it, the better. So hopefully this video introduces the idea of firewall-based application restrictions to some people and informs them if almost everything in your computer connects to the internet, even if you don't know. <laughs> Of course, don't go and block every application because it might break something. But I think in general, exploring tools like this and gaining more control over your computer is a good thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you agree, disagree. And if you wanna learn more about powerful cybersecurity tools, make sure you're subscribed. We're currently working on a video on intercepting calls in Wireshark and showing you how you can listen to other people's audio. Pretty crazy stuff. Now, another tool that really leverages the power of Windows Firewall is the sponsor of today's video, CrowdSec. This is a tool that kind of allows you to run an advanced intrusion detection system that's open source and free in your network environment, whether you're using Windows or Linux. As you can see, uh, we have something called the Windows Firewall Bouncer here. Now, and what this means is it can use Windows Firewall to block specific types of network scans, attackers trying to infiltrate your network or using vulnerabilities. It has various scenarios built in like backdoor attempts that it can block. So if you're hosting anything, especially if you're running your own kind of file server, you definitely wanna have intrusion prevention. And this is a great open source tool that's kind of extensible, that has a crowd-based threat intelligence that you could totally deploy. You can also use this to look up any connection that you see in, for example, TCP view. You could type in the IP address like that, and it's gonna tell you if it's been seen before, if it's involved in attacks, and so on. You can also check out their code base on GitHub if you like. 
it is a community-based tool and it is extensible and anyone can pretty much create an account and use it. There's no credit card required. So make sure you check them out using the link in description if something like this is interesting or you want to learn more about intrusion prevention. It's a great tool to play around with. And if you're here this weekend, we will be doing a Discord event where we'll be talking about some of the concepts we just touched on about application spying and uh, telemetry, network forensics. We'll be talking about your experience with different apps how you can block Windows spying and so on. So if you're interested in that, do check out the event. Click on the link in the description. We'll be doing it on Discord and join us this Sunday. You can also just chat with me and uh, make friends. It'll be super fun. So looking forward to seeing you there. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it. And thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.